All right, there we go. All right, so real quick, briefly, UTP is the unshielded twisted pair. It's the actual physical cabling, the physical wiring in the ethernet cable. So you have four UTP pairs, orange, white, and orange, uh, green, white, and green, blue, white, and blue, and brown, white, and brown. And then a shielded twisted pair is um, an actual physical, basically aluminum metal sheath around the twisted pair that helps reduce uh, interference and crosstalk. So structure cabling, the TIA, so that you have different sorts of standards. So the EIA is the Electronics and Electronic Industries Alliance and the TIA is the Telecommunications Industry Association. You don't necessarily need to know what that stands for, but you do need to know that the EIA TIA has certain standards and certain standards, the important ones are um, the twisted pair media. So that is how the standard for twisted pair. So we went over standards for wireless transmission. If you want to be um, wireless transmission, if you want to be categorized as a as 802.11a, you have to ha hit these certain benchmarks. If you want to be 802.11g, you have to hit these benchmarks. Uh, yes, Edward. So, yeah, well, and TIA, there are two different standards. It's two different companies that have come together to make one standard. Oh, one. Oh, okay. So you have like uh, highlighted here. You have the EIA TIA five sixty eight B one two and three. Yes. So the twisted pair media and the optical fiber cabling standard. Those are how, in order to be considered, um, certified. So basically, if you get this standard, you are certified that you are actually transmitting at this speed and you're actually really good cable, as opposed to some you know some dude in his basement who took out copper and twisted it and goes that's that's a 568b2 cable right there no. no it's not it hasn't been certified it hasn't been tested it hasn't hit the standard so these standards are important to know um but the important ones are the twisted pair media and the optical fiber cabling standard because those are physical media whereas the the 568b1 is the quote commercial cabling standard master document so that's just how cabling gets put and implemented into a building so if it's not put down correctly it's not technically hitting that standard and doesn't um, you can't say that um, so this so this these um, these definitions here building entrance equipment room telecommunications closet backbone cabling horizontal cabling and work area it's a lot easier for me just instead of reading them from the book to show you actual examples so the building entrance um, for example you guys at home you guys know where your router is how, how coax cable screws into it's got that you know you guys know what a coax cable right that is called the demarcation point and that is basically where the isp the internet service provider stops providing help right it helps with service but anything physical that's where their stuff stops and your stuff starts so the deep demarcation point is also called the building entrance for a campus it's the building entrance for home it's demarcation point you can use them simultaneously um, Mr. Vishnoff uses demarcation point here, so we'll just go with that. So that's physically where the internet comes into the building. In the school, it's in the downstairs wiring closet. Um, which exact wire it is, I can't remember, but uh, it's down there. The equipment room is, we actually have a couple of those. We have the one downstairs, we have the one right here, and we have one in the science room. And then one in the FAC, one in the armor building. Basically, each building needs its own equipment room or telecommunications room in order to house all this and to house everything. Um, backbone cabling and horizontal cabling. Backbone cabling is from this building to the armor building or from this building to the fine arts center. It's the it's wiring that connects um, that goes from the main equipment room in one building to the main equipment room in a second building. Right, and I have a diagram that'll actually, you, you know, I've relabeled for armor building and FAC in just a moment. I just want to get through this. Um, horizontal cabling connects the individual workstations. Well, not the individual workstations. It's the the jacks on the wall to the server, to the server room, um, to our patch panel, and then the work area is from the computer to the wall. So what you guys are going to be creating, you're going to be creating the work area patch patch cable. That then plugs into the horizontal cabling that goes um, horizontal cabling through the wall to the patch panel. Um, I've already technically set up the backbone cabling through the wall um, to the inter to the internet with from the switch. Um, but yeah, any questions on that so far? 
again, I'm going to, I have a diagram in just a minute. So if you're kind of confused where everything is, it will be. Horizontal cabling is like, it goes to the, or the after points, and then work area would be like the wet. Exactly. So the horizontal cabling is the stuff that goes through the ceiling. It goes through the wall, which is stuff that once it's in place is really hard, expensive, um, and you tend to not move it. So one thing, um, you guys know who Steve Johnson or Scott Johnson is? So his dad or Miss Johnson, Miss Johnson's dad does, he's the IT guy for, it's Wheaton Christian Grammar School, right, Mrs. Hockett? Do you know? Um, I think he does know for Tyndale. I think he officially works for Tyndale and then Tyndale sends him to the Wheaton Christian Grammar School. I can't remember. But anyway, yeah, he's he's a great guy. Um, but he was telling me once that he was hired to pull like one or two cables through the ceiling to a certain spot. And instead of pulling two, he pulled six because it's a lot easier to pull six cables at once instead of two as opposed to, okay, here's two. Oh, six months later, I got to pull two more. Okay, I got to pull two more. Because what it is, is you get into the ceiling, you have a ladder, you're moving ceiling tiles, you're pulling, you're pulling, you get off the ladder, you move down a ceiling tile more, and doing that is really, really tough. So that's why it's called future proofing, All right? That's why we have gigabit internet and we have cabling for that, even though we may not hit it. When we hit to, when we go, try to get to 10 gigabit speeds, um, which I think CAT6 can do, CAT6A or E. Um, you basically you prep for the future because it's easier to do that now than it is to do it every couple years. So all it is is future proofing for updates or um, upgrades. Sebastian. So like on the book, it was saying like Cat Seven is like. Cat Seven's not commercially available yet. It's still, they're still working on it. But yeah, Cat Seven is there, and it's looking to be. It's going to be insanely fast. Not only insanely fast, but it's also way less susceptible to, to interference. Of course, in your home or even at school, like it wouldn't be, we wouldn't notice that big of a difference. But for um, banking institutions or undersea cabling, they're actually trying to re. They're, my my brother worked, and I'm getting a little off topic here, so I'll go. I'll stop with this and then get back to the the story. But my brother was working for a financial company. And he was telling me that people were paying like hundred million dollars to get fiber optic cable uh, under on the Atlantic floor. Um, to take off hundredths of a second in transmission time. Because that hundredth of a second can affect how quickly you can buy and sell stocks and affects how much money you can make. So like that, that blew my mind that they're spending that much to get a tenth of a second taken off transmission speed. All right, so up here, this is my edited diagram. So you can see our phone room downstairs is where it's the main cross connect where it comes in. Um, I added that to our main building, but this then goes to the IT closet here, which you guys have all seen and been in. Then this is the wiring through the wall, and this is to the actual wall jacks along each wall, and then the workstation, these are patch cables. So what you guys are gonna be creating is this right here um, to this, and that's it. So you guys are gonna create these. Wait. Hold on, I know, wait, so I know How do the you... tech, the, oh, I see. IG so these are to the to the phone room. Phone room is downstairs. Oh, to the what, what TC HC. TC is a telecommunications closet slash horizontal cabling. These are classroom, right? No, that it. Okay. This is technically wall plates. It's it's where okay. you as an end user can mess can plug into a wall. Okay. Normally they're not exposed like that. Normally it's in the wall like an electrical outlet and they're not movable. Okay. So like if I wanted to, oh, there's no one. Um, so, you got, so the outlets in the wall, for me to change that, for me, just some dude, is really hard. Because I have to cut into the wall and do all that. That's normally where um, uh, the, the, horiz the horizontal cabling is. But because this building was built before ethernet, yeah. they didn't have those, they only had power. So what we have to do is we have to run our own horizontal cabling outside of the wall, which is a lot easier because we don't have to cut into the wall. We don't have to make sure we're not hitting studs or power, or, you know, accidentally zapping ourselves or having to deal with studs. Um, it's just you put it on the wall and you can kind of go. Okay. Uh, so the cable from the IT closet to the cable uh, plug is the one with... Uh, 
is the horizontal. The box. Thing, right? Yes, yes. It ends with the box. And then, oh, I mean like this. What is it called? Again? Oh, the keystone. Yeah, it ends with that. And then the one connecting our devices, the workstation to the to that is the full size, full size or oh, Cat Six. Yeah, it's the Cat Six. It's the Ethernet cable with the jacks at the end. Okay. Yep. Um, so we went over horizontal cross. So W O work area outlets. That's where you plug into the wall. This is a little bit of a breakdown. So you have the main cam or the main cross connect. That's where it comes into the whole building. That then breaks down into the inter um, intermediate cross connect, which is the individual buildings. That then break down horizontal backbone um, or horizontal cabling, which is to the individual classrooms. And then you have the individual work air work area workstations, those are the individual computers. Um, do you guys have any questions on that? Are we going to be quiz on this? Um, yes, yeah, so you guys do need to know where, like, in, in the school, where's the horizontal cabling? Is that from, is that where the people, is that where it comes in from the internet service provider? Is that where it goes from the IT closet, the main IT closet to the, to, or the phone room? To the IT closet is that where it goes from the IT closet to the keystone jack on the wall or is that where it goes from the keystone jack on the wall to the computer it's IT to the keystone jack right? yes so you guys or if I said where is the intermediate cross connect on Wheaton Academy you guys will have to say it's this or it's that or it's this or it's that it will be phone room to IT yes so those sort of things you guys do need to know um, that um, Christoph what's the use of telecommunication closets what is the use of them? Yeah. So a telecommunications closet is where in is where you would have your patch panel and your switch, and that's instead of having to run um, an Ethernet cable from instead of each one of these having a physical Ethernet cable connecting to the switch, you can kind of have I'm sorry, not to the switch. Um, instead of having each computer having to be connected directly to the internet service provider, their equipment, we can have one cable running from their equipment to our equipment and then cables running from our equipment to the computers. So it saves us a step. So if something goes wrong, we can figure out, is it more on our end? Is it more on their end? Is it um, hardware? Is it software? As opposed to just having 700 or not 700, instead of having a hundred jacks going into their equipment, they can have one or two or three, depending on what's going on or where it's needed. Um, so we went over horizontal cabling. Um, this is a good, this is another good um, diagram just to understand where it is. So this is, you know, we, this is the patch panel, yeah, the infamous patch panels. That doesn't need to, functional, functionally you are correct, Sebastian, it doesn't need to be there, but it does help a lot with organization. Kind of like the shoe, the shoe box in the closet example. It still holds the shoes, but it's less organized and it's harder to change. Um, so uh, backbone cabling is, what, what is backbone cabling? Um, 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 I almost said Andrew, not Edward. Andrew, I almost did it again. Edward, what is backbone cabling? Backbone cabling. So this guy right here, this A. That, oh, that should be the one, it's intermediate. Uh, cross connect. And either depending on how this is set up, that's either connecting to the ISP or it's connecting to another telecommunications closet. Oh. So it's one of the two. This is saying it's interconnecting this closet with other closets. Yeah. Okay, but it also could be from the ISP. Um, Wait, if it's another telecommunications closet, where is a telecommunications? Uh, take with Cami for example. So we have office, right? we have that one. We have one downstairs. In the and the, we have one also in the science building. We have one somewhere in the field house. We have one in the armor building, and then we have one in the. So each building has to have its own. Yeah. How far can they go? I think so. In order to have phones, you have to have some sort of telecommunications closet. Whether it's bit, wait, could just be a patch panel, and that's it, or it could be, you know, what you guys see in here, where we're hos where we're housing our server and all that. Just depends on what's needed in each building. So um, Academy Hall doesn't need too many things. It basically just needs Wi-Fi and phones. Um, whereas this building, we have, you know, 20 computers here. We have. 
10 computers over in Studio 22. We got computers in the Idea Lab. We have a bunch of stuff, so we need a bigger one than the ones in Academy Hall. Um, so terminated, um, where it terminates, that's where the cable ends and that's where you can plug it in. Uh, 8P8C is um, another name for um, the RJ45 because it's got eight pins and eight connectors. Um, yes, those right there. Um, and I want to start, we went over that. Unshield a twisted pair. So this is more about um, the cabling. I want to make sure you guys have a decent amount of time to work on that stuff. So let me... Okay, now this is stuff we, we need to go over. All right, so UTP we've already gone over. Stands for what, Tommy? Uh, I'm shielded, twisted, pair. Baller, exactly. Um, which is faster, Cat5 or Cat6? First person to answer. Cat6. Cat6. Does anyone know the transmission speed off the top of their head? One shot on megabits per second. 1,000 megabits per second. Also called what? Jeez, I guess what? Um... <laughs> <laughs> Cat six, yes. Cat six starts at a um, um, thousand megabits per second. What is that also called, Christoph? Do you happen to know off the top of your head? Cat five E. No. Is that like super fast Ethernet? It's not super fast Ethernet. How, a thousand megabytes is how many bit is how many gigabytes? One. It's called gigabit internet. All right, because we're sending a gigabit of information as opposed to a gigabyte. Um, you gotta know that. Gotta know that you're sending a gigabit instead of a gigabyte. Well, you should know that data transmission speeds are always measured in bytes, not bit, or in gigabits, not bytes. Do we have to know like what speed each one does? <laughs> you do need to know which one. You do. You need to know hierarchy. Um. And so each, so there are different hierarchies of speed you need to know the common names for them. So if I said 1,000 megabits per second or 100 megabits per second, you got to know the common names for those. Partially, most importantly, because one, it's a lot easier to say, you know, gigabit internet as opposed to 1,000 megabytes per second internet. And also on the Network Plus exam, they don't, they'll just say, given this sort of internet with, you know, um, gigabit ethernet, what's the expected download speed or whatever like that. So you have to know that gigabit internet is, is stands for a thousand megabits per second. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, who can tell me, Sebastian, do you know what cat three is? What it's used for? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So cat three is telephone wire. Who, oh, this is, this is actually a really good question. Who knows what the, the pit, the plastic pin at the end of a cat three is called. It's not RG. It's still RJ. RJ Not thirty nine. No. You guys aren't even close. One. No. Two. Three. Okay. Three. Stop. 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 <laughs> All right. Uh, you guys do need to know it, it's RJ eleven, and the way the easy way I remember it is one eleven is less than forty five, therefore it's for cat three, not cat six. Also, another way, what's one plus one? Two. <laughs> okay, Sebastian, we need to talk after school. Uh, so one plus one is two. There are two twisted pairs in RJ11. Because with RJ11, you only need to send power and one transmission and receiving. Can you send like an Ethernet to the power of so what you're talking about is called power over Ethernet. Yes, but you can't just take the wires and plug it into the wall. You'll shock yourself and probably yeah. start a fire. What you need is what's called a uh, power over Ethernet injector or PoE injector. And you can get switches that automatically do this. But in a in a Ethernet cable, not every single copper wire is used. I think only four of them are used. And then you have four extra that are used for future proofing when you have like 10 gigabit Internet speeds. What it is, um, PoE, what a PoE injector does is that it puts an electrical current through, I think, I can't remember the exact pairs, but one of the unused pair of, in the wire or in the cable, and it sends power as well as internet. So our access points are power over ethernet um, access points. And what they do is instead of having to plug those into an outlet and then plug it into your 
um, access point and then have Ethernet going from your access point to another access point, you just have access points connected with Ethernet cables. So it's pretty awesome. Um, and then on the flip side, you can buy something at um, Best Buy that's called Ether, what I've called Ethernet over power. And I actually use this in my house and it works really well, especially for gaming because I know that's important. Um, you plug it into the wall and what it's, so you have these two boxes. You plug one into the wall and then you plug, and then you plug your Ethernet. Yes. <laughs> She's going next door to so pay attention. So you have the power, so you have the PoE and you have the thing you plug into the wall and then you plug an Ethernet cable into that and that plugs into your router. Then what it does is you take your other, your second box that comes with it, and you plug it somewhere else into the, in the wall of your house. And then I don't know, it auto magically happens. It finds, it figures out the two connected and then it will send ethernet through the copper wiring in your house to that other outlet. And then you plug it into your Xbox. So I have that running through my house. I have um, my Xbox plugged into this little box into the wall that then goes through my entire house. Go. Nope. <laughs> Don't you dare even install Xbox. He said he's using an Xbox. I'm like, Xbox is <laughs> And so, and then that plugs into my router and I get re actually really, really good internet speeds. Um, Cause it's, almost as good as having cable it's almost as it's as if i'm i have an ethernet cable running from my xbox all the way through my house through the wires of my house to my to my router and then that, would, that like that does wires and... it's using wires that are already in existence yeah. i don't have to do anything um so yeah so yeah proposed standard this isn't out yet <laughs> what <laughs> well, we'll find out. <laughs> what usually happens? Like, what happens? Do I you have a meeting. Like, why is he recording? I'm like, he puts all the videos online. He's a great teacher. Yeah, we, we just. I heard that. Plugged into your filter. Um. Yeah, she has. Yeah, she has. She's like, why is he recording? Yeah. You try something. So yeah. you know, we gave it better. She's gonna. Like, you're you're wait, so we're going to watch it. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Wait, so, wait. anyway. So, like, what happens? Like, do you, do you like, have a meeting with her afterwards? Or? Shower.